What's up guys, today I'm attempting something crazy, I'm trying to add a 1TB NVMe SSD to my Nintendo Switch 2. That's right, we are taking the Switch 2's new microSD Express slot and hooking it up to a real M.2 NVMe solid state drive. Will it work? Will my Switch explode? Let's find out. This project is actually an open source mod from NVNT Labs. They designed a custom PCB adapter that converts the Switch 2's microSD slot into an M.2 NVMe slot. Huge shout out to JLC PCB for sponsoring today's video and for manufacturing the custom PCBs that made this experiment possible. I'll talk more about them in a bit, but if you're into DIY electronics, definitely check the link in the description for a sweet deal. Now let's dive in. First, why would anyone do this? Well, the Switch 2 uses a new microSD Express card slot. Unlike the original Switch's slow SD interface, microSD Express on the Switch 2 actually provides a full PCIe Gen 3 X1 connection and speaks the NVMe protocol. In plain English, the Switch 2's SD slot is basically a mini PCIe slot. This means, in theory, you could plug in an NVMe SSD, like the ones we use in PCs, through an adapter and massively expand your storage. There's a big cost advantage too. MicroSD Express cards, the new super fast SD cards, are rare and expensive right now. Even in 2025, people can buy a Switch 2 but can't find a compatible MicroSD Express card locally. That's exactly why this NVNT Labs pro project is such a big deal, it fills a huge market gap. And thanks to its open source CERN license, anyone can legally build on it, improve it and even sell it, as long as the same open terms are followed. For example, a 256GB microSD Express card can cost around 70 plus US dollars, while you can get a 1TB NVMe 2230 SSD for under 100 dollars. Way more storage for nearly the same price. So an NVMe mod could be a game changer for Switch 2 storage, if we can get it to work. Now, the project I'm following is by NVNT Labs, I'll link their GitHub in the description Description. They released an open source design called STE X2M2 that essentially maps the Switch 2's microSD Express pins to an M.2 M key slot. The PCB has a tiny fake microSD card edge on one side to plug into the console and an M.2 2230 socket on the other side for the SSD. It's a pure pin to pin adapter. No chips, just copper traces connecting everything. Sounds simple, right? Well, we'll see. Quick reality check this is a bleeding edge mod and very experimental. The GitHub notes is a proof of concept and work in progress. There are warnings like use at your own risk and only use low power M.2 2230 SSDs. Apparently even the small 2230 NVMe drives can draw more power than the switch slot might provide. So you don't want to use a big power hungry SSD here. Stick to the tiny ones like the Corsair MP600 Mini I'm using that use less power and voltage. And definitely do not try this on an original switch or any non-express slot or you could fry something. Alright, so to build this I needed that custom PCB. Thankfully NVNT Labs provided the design files on GitHub. Let me show you how I ordered it super easily from our sponsor JLCPCB. I went to JLCPCB.com, uploaded the Gerber file from the GitHub and within minutes I had my board order ready. JLC PCB is a PCB manufacturer that makes prototyping projects like this incredibly accessible. You just drag and drop the design files, select a few options like board, color, quantity and that's it. They only charge $2 for 5 PCBs for basic boards, which is insane and even complex boards are affordable. In my case, I ordered 10 boards, the minimum was 5, but I wanted extras for reasons you will soon see. I also opted to have them shipped quickly. JLC PCBs turnaround was great, they fabricated and shipped the boards to me within about a week. If you're a new customer, they often have coupons, like $60 in new user coupons, to save even more. I will put the link at the top of the description if you want to check them out and snack the deal. Big thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring and helping out with this project. Okay, so the parts for that Switch to NVMe adapter I was talking about just arrived and it looks pretty awesome. So I'm definitely hyped to open that up. As you can see, we have here JLC PCB and we also got here the parts which we want to solder on the PCB from JLC PCB. So let's go open that up. Honestly, I'm kind of impressed. It just took about a week, including manufacturing and shipping internationally to Switzerland. Looking at the box, it definitely looks very, very neat, I think. The color is very good. There's nothing to say against it. What I'm actually interested in is what is here inside. And as you can see, the box just comes up like this. Here we have them, the PCBs. I like this foil actually, it's as you can see it's a very very thick foil, last point you can even open it here with your bare hands, which is very very cool, is what is here inside. Oh yeah baby, here we go, 
Yep, they are looking very, very awesome. Thanks again, JLC PCB, for those. Considering the pricing and shipping, it's definitely worth it. Then we also got here the parts. Oh, wow. Yep, I will have something to do here. This is also why I got 10 of those. All right, as you can see, we have here actually the NVMe connector. And if you look at it, we have here like two uh, plastic pins with which we can just hold the whole thing here on our PCB. If we hold it right, as you can see, uh, it will snap in and then it will, be e it will be very easy to solder here on it. And then we got here the R1. I hope you can see it. And we have here the little, little resistor, I think it is, uh, to connect. Plus, we will also wait for the NVMe 2230. The boards came out really nice. The quality is top-notch. All the tiny pads and traces for the M.2 connector and the microSD contacts look super clean. Honestly, I'm impressed every time I use JLC PCB. Even these tiny, intricate boards are precise. Alright, now I have the Plank BCB. Next step, solder on the components. The M.2 slot connector and a little 0603 size resistor. This is where the real fun begins. <laughs> Soldering time. So I'll be honest, this project is above my normal soldering skill level. We're dealing with some tiny parts here, especially the microSD Express connector, which has ridiculously small pads. But I'm armed with a brand new Weller soldering iron, finally upgraded my gear. And I did some practice on a dummy SMD training kit first. Let's see how it goes. Attempt number one. This did not go well. <laughs> As you can see, I bridged like half the pins together with solder. Absolute mess. I was basically reflowing and wicking repeatedly and I think I overheated the board a bit. Yeah, this one is toast. <laughs> Next. Attempt 2. Slightly better but still pretty rough. I got the M.2 connector on and the tiny 10k resistor but I wasn't confident in the solder joints. Some looked cold. One pad for the micro SD connector even lifted off the PCB because I was too rough. Oops. At this point I'm sweating bullets, but good thing I ordered multiple boards, right? <laughs> By attempt 3 and 4 I started to get the hang of it. I used a ton of flux and patience. I think I finally got a decently soldered board on try 4. The joints look shiny. No obvious bridges under my magnifier. Not gonna win any awards for prettiness, but hey, if it works, it works. So here's my baby. Not gonna lie, it's a bit wobbly looking, but all the important connections are hopefully solid. Moment of truth coming up. So here again, this here is uh, the first result. <laughs> Total mess. The second result, I, uh, as you can see, I just uh, pushed it to, like w while I was soldering it, I was pushing the pins to the bottom and the part was actually a little bit lifted up. It wasn't like fully on the PCB plate. So I, yeah, I, I, I screwed it up here. But then I learned a little bit. And on the third one, I already soldered already uh, on the PCB plate, the soldering. Like I pre-soldered it. And then afterwards I put it, uh, the part on it. But uh, I already made like good progress here. The problem is just that I, yeah, screwed it up here on the side. I was just, if you're looking at it at, from the side on, you will see that there's like some connections in between the pins. But then the fourth one, I actually think came pretty, pretty solid. Let's go actually to light so that I can show you. Here on the right side you can see the pins are still a little bit wrong, like not wrong but a little bit messed up but it has no connections in between and is perfectly connected to the pins on the ground on the PCB which makes it definitely good. So I was happy that this worked. And here as you can see it just looks way 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 cleaner. Also the 10,000 ohm um, resistor here it's also very very good, right? Alright, the adapter is assembled. I've got my Corsair MP600 Mini 1TB NVMe drive slotted in. I also 3D printed a little case to hold the board and SSD, so it's easier to handle and to avoid shorting anything out. Let's plug this into the Switch 2 and see what happens. I've already formatted the SSD to XFAT because that's what the Switch uses for SD cards. Here goes nothing. Plugged in, do we get extra storage? And we got an error. The switch says it can't access the microSD card, in other words, it's not recognizing my NVMe drive as a valid device. Not the result I was hoping for. So it didn't work, at least not plug and play. Now the big question, why? Did I mess up the soldering? Is my adapter just faulty or is the switch to not handshaking with this NVMe SSD the way it expects to with an SD Express card? It could be a lot of things. Let's troubleshoot a bit. The fact that the switch sees something enough to throw an error means the adapter is connected, the switch knows something is in the slot, but it can't interface with it. 
I double checked my solder joints with a multimeter. Continuity looks okay on all the critical lines. No obvious shots between the PCI lanes, etc. The SSD was getting warm, so it was definitely powered, so I suspect the issue isn't a loose connection. After digging into the documentation and the community's findings, I discovered that a simple passive adapter isn't enough for this mod. The Switch 2 is expecting to communicate with a real microSD Express card, which has its own controller. When you just wire up an NVMe drive directly, the Switch doesn't get the proper handshake or initializing sequence it expects. In the SD Express protocol, there's likely some negotiation that a normal NVMe SSD doesn't do on its own. According to NVNT Labs, the adapter will need an onboard microcontroller or FPGA to emulate an SD card during that initial handshake with the Switch 2. In fact, on the NVNT Labs GitHub, they updated their project goals to include add MCU FPGA for handshake because of this exact issue. So my version of the adapter, which is just a direct pin to pin prototype, was kind of doomed not to work yet. It's not really my soldering, though who knows, maybe that didn't help. It's a fundamental limitation. The Switch is basically saying, hey, I don't recognize this device because the NVMe SSD isn't responding like an SD Express card would. That was a relief to learn, honestly. I mean, I was bummed it didn't work out of the gate, but knowing it's a known issue with the design means my unit probably isn't just a dot. It's an expected hurdle, so if you're trying this at home, and I know some of you will, be aware that at this stage you won't get a working SSD with just a bare adapter. This is more of a let's see if we can physically make it experiment for now. While we're here, let's talk about the physical aspect of this mod. As you can see, the NVMe drive sticks out of the Switch 2. The microSD slot on the Switch 2 is on the bottom, so having a whole SSD and adapter plugged in is not exactly sleek. NVNT Labs also provided a 3D model that holds the SSD and kind of hugs the side of the switch. It helps a bit, but it's still going to make the console awkward to handle. Some folks have suggested using a ribbon cable or a right angle adapter to reposition the SSD or even making a dock that holds the SSD externally and provides its own power. Those are awesome ideas for the future. Maybe something like an NVMe expansion dock could be the end game. For now, this is truly a prototype hack, not something you would keep plugged in during intense gaming sessions. Unless you like having a drive dangling off your switch. So what is next? Am I giving up? No way. This is just part one of the journey. Now that we know we likely need a handshake microcontroller, I'm watching the NVNT Labs project closely. They are already working on a new prototype with an MCU to handle the switch initialization signals. As soon as that design is released, you bet I'll be building it. And of course, I'll use a JLC PCB to fabricate it, maybe even to assemble it for me this time. Speaking of which, for my immediate next step, I've decided to order another set of these boards but with JLC PCB's assembly service. Yep, I'm gonna have the professionals solder it for me. JLC PCB can actually source components and do SMT assembly, which is great because they will solder that fiddly microSD connector perfectly. This will eliminate any doubt that my soldering was the issue. I've placed the order for an assembled adapter, basically the same board, just machine assembled. It's being made as we speak. In an upcoming video, I'll test that one to see if a flawlessly assembled passive adapter behaves any differently. And if not, we'll be all set to move on to the version with the microcontroller. So don't lose hope, we essentially at the forefront of a new mod. Sometimes you have to fail a few times to push the boundaries of what's possible. The fact that the Switch 2 even has a PCIe enabled card slot is awesome and I'm confident we'll get a working NVMe solution soon. Maybe not today, but stay tuned. To recap, we attempt the world's first, to my knowledge, DIY NVMe SSD adapter for the Switch 2. We successfully designed and built the hardware thanks to open source plans and JLC PCB's help, but we hit a known snack with the handshake protocol, so the mod didn't fully work yet. We learned a ton in the process, from advanced SMD soldering to the quirks of SD Express, and this is only part one. In the next installment, I'll be back with the professionally assembled board and hopefully the updated design with a handshake chip. We're going to get this thing working and unlock huge storage on the Switch too. Now, if you found this interesting, make sure to like the video and subscribe to Better Gaming. I love doing these bleeding edge mod projects and I'll keep you updated on this one as it progresses. Also, let me know in the comments what you think. Did you expect it to work? Any ideas I should try? Or any questions about how this all works? I will do my best to answer and your tips might even help in the next attempt. Finally, big thanks again to JLC PCB for sponsoring and supporting this project. If you're feeling inspired to create your own PCBs or hardware projects, definitely check them out. The link is in the description at the very top. Alright, that's all for today's experiment. 
it didn't fully work, but hey, that's part of the fun. We're pushing the envelope here. All pictures are in high quality and more unseen images will constantly be uploaded in collections. Don't forget to smile and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.